Okay, let's talk about how to save money. And this is a very important topic, especially in today's uh, economy with all the pressures that are going on with inflation. It certainly is affecting all of us. And I want to talk about uh, how we can use basic math. I'm going to give you three tips. And I'm not a financial advisor. This is a lot of this is kind of common sense. But I am going to um, kind of focus in on this question that I've heard over decades of teaching mathematics. And that is, when am I ever going to use math? Is math important? I don't need math. Well, you do need math. And basic math skills can actually help you financially. Okay, not only... Uh, can it help you? It will help you. So let's talk about uh, three ways or three areas that you can apply basic math to help you identify um, places where you could save money. Okay, so I'm going to get into this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have about 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything else in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could help you excel in your math course if you're taking any exam that has math on it. Uh, for example, the GED, HiSET, TASC, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a very uh, comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes and you are a student, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But you got to take awesome math notes if you want to do well. That's just an absolute must. Just trust me on this. Start improving your notes and everything else will get better. Okay, now uh, this particular list is no... There's so many different other areas uh, beyond this list. This is kind of real basic practical stuff, and this may or may not apply to uh, all of you out there, and you'll have your different uh, uh, kind of ideas on approaching this, but I just want to share with you some real basic stuff. So, you know, if this video is too basic for you, I apologize, but let's just kind of get into it right now. So the first thing is credit cards. Almost all of us have credit cards. Maybe some of you out there say, I don't use credit cards. I certainly don't carry a credit card balance. That's excellent, okay? But there is a lot of people out there that have credit cards and credit card balances, right? I just read the financial news and, you know, um, you know Americans, are in, uh, their credit card usage is going up. Now, why would that be? Because inflation is going up and, you know, it's tough. Your wages aren't going up as fast as inflation. So people use their credit cards and that's just the way this was. Um, I'm certainly old enough to, you know, I was a full on adult in the 2008 uh, recession. I'm old enough to have gone through a few recessions, you know, as an adult. And, uh, you know, when times get tough in the economy and uh, or inflation goes up, people tend to use their credit cards more and more. So if you are carrying a, a considerable uh, credit card balance, you need to ask yourself, OK, uh, how much is this credit card balance, uh, um, you know, cost to me? Well, you know, the, the ideal thing, a lot of you would like, just pay your credit cards off, right? Just pay off your credit cards. Well, that's easy to say, but what if you have like, you know, $15,000 credit card balance, right? Now, some of you, you know, again, you know, might be saying, well, you should have never gotten 15,000. Well, I don't want to be judgmental here. Okay. Again, a lot of people have a lot of credit card uh, balance uh, for any number of different reasons. The whole idea is how can we save money on credit card usage? Well, here's one thing that you need to know. Okay. Your credit cards, your APR, the percent you pay on credit cards are going up, all right? They are going up. So uh, if you don't read the news, that's okay. I understand that, but you should be uh, familiar with the Federal Reserve, okay? The Federal Reserve is increasing the interest rates, okay, that are going to impact your credit card uh, interest rates. And your credit card interest rates are going to be going up uh, big time. They've already gone up. So if you haven't checked your credit card uh, APRs, okay, you need to do this. You need to determine which card is lower, okay, which card you want to use. And you're going to have to do some uh, some math, math calculations. Which card gives you better points? Which card should I use for this? Uh, which card is a terrible card? You know, do you have any cards that are like 30% APR? You know, maybe you should stop using this uh, card. But one thing that I want to... Um, I suggest to you, okay, is when it comes to math, let's focus in on math again, is 
you need to de make some determinations, okay? For example, if you do have some money, okay, that you could put towards your credit cards, you could calculate how much interest you may save, okay? All right, so um, just determine your APR. Now, the way it technically works, there's a daily uh, balance, and, you know, it's a little bit more comp complex than just, you know, simple math, but you can get a, a decent estimate, okay? You can just say, all right, hey, how much, you go online, use a credit card uh, tool, okay, to help you kind of calculate this stuff. You should understand the basic math is if you only pay minimums, uh, on your, your $15,000 balance at whatever APR for one year, how much interest is that going to cost you? Okay. So now if you put in more money towards paying your credit cards off, how much are you going to save? Right. So paying down your debt, especially high percentage debt is uh, a great way of saving money if you can. Okay. Now, what if you can Well, another thing that you could do um, and this is where you, you're going to have to make these math comparisons is you could try to take your $15,000 and do a balance transfer. Okay. Balance transfer to like a 0% credit card. All right. Uh, now, hopefully most of you out there know what I'm talking about. So let's say you're like, oh my goodness, there's no way I could pay this $15,000. I can barely make the minimum on it. Well, you should consider going, you know, looking at a 0% uh, credit card uh, and do a balance transfer. Okay. Now, before you do that, though, realize that there is a fee associated by doing this balance transfer. Okay. It's going to cost you money. Sometimes it's like 1% or 3% or whatever the case is, but it's going to cost you money to do this balance transfer. Okay. So, but you know, if you can get your debt at 0%, in other words, if you get your $15,000 on a 0% balance transfer, well, it's going to stay $15,000 for that one year. Okay. But you got to be mindful uh, after that one year expires, after this 0% uh, deal, whatever that is, um, then you're, you're going back to your, you know, whatever crazy, you know, uh, APRs we have right now. And again, the, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates. Okay. So uh, this, these uh, interest rates are going up and up and up. And who knows how bad it's going to get. Um, it's certainly something that you would need to consider. So you need to do some basic math here, all right? Basic arithmetic, get your calculator out and do some comparison. How much is your balance? Just don't, just don't transfer your stuff over, you know, do some basic, uh, arithmetic, see how much the balance transfer is going to cost you, see how much you can save, uh, if you didn't want to pay that fee, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So again, basic math and you need to have a basic sense of uh how to work with percent okay now if you need help with percent i have a ton of videos on percent in my youtube channel in my pre-algebra playlist so this is one area percent that you certainly need to uh want to uh, you know brush up on if you don't know how to do basic percentage uh, but anyways credit cards this is a huge area um, that people can save uh, in okay just don't leave your credit card balance hanging in there and pay a minimum balance on these crazy uh, high interest rate credit card. So anyways, tell me what you think. What would you do on here? There's different approaches. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. It's not my thing, but you know, I do have uh, math skills. And I could just kind of look at what's going on. Okay. So credit card debt, most people have it and not everybody could just pay it off in a whim. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second area where we can use math. And that is a budget. Okay. Now, if you don't know um, how to construct a basic financial budget, I would suggest that you just, you know, look up something online, but it's pretty easy. Okay. Uh, pretty much you're going to just start listing down your, your expenses. Okay. Here's our expenses. Here is your rent or your mortgage. Here is your car payment, uh, your car, here is your car insurance. And then here you have down here, like food, uh, maybe, uh, you know, entertainment going out to eat, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, uh, when you construct down all your expenses, you're gonna kind of look. You're gonna kind of see two categories. You'll see uh, a fixed kind of ex expenses, and then you'll have um, a variable set of expenses. Now, what do I mean uh, by fixed? Well, your rent, okay, is pretty much gonna be uh, fixed right now. Now, I know rent is going up. This inflation is very, very, you know, uh, challenging right now. So. 
Uh, but if you're in a lease, at least you know what your your rent's going to be for whatever period of time. Your car payment's not going to uh, change. Now, your insurance can change, okay? But let's just say it is what it is. Uh, you have your car insurance. So there's going to be kind of a categories that you're going to be paying regularly, like your phone or whatnot. Those are going to be kind of generally fixed things. Now, some of your fixed categories, like your car insurance, you could go shopping around to, um, you know, uh, reduce that. But like, let's say your car payment, you're not, you're not, you're not going to refinance your car right now because the interest rates are going up. So all this about refi, refinancing your, your car or your or any big loan, especially like a house, you're going to end up paying more. So that's not definitely not a way that you could save money. But uh, anyways, you have your fixed and then you have your variable, right? How much you spend on food. Uh, certainly food is going up, okay? But it is kind of a... I don't want to say discretionary, but is variable. Okay, can you do? What can you do to try to save money on food? These are things that you can you can try to focus in on. Certainly, like your entertainment, going out to eat, things like that. These are things that you can control. But when you make a budget, you can again kind of identify what is your what percent. What's the biggest uh, you know categories here? And uh, th things that you can control, okay? So if you're not mindful of it, just write things down, get a total, all right? And then if you want, you can just go ahead and get a percentage and be like, wow, you know, I spend, I don't know, like uh, maybe 20% uh, of my budget or my, my income on food, right? That might be, you know, something that you may not even be aware of. So I think a budget is a great tool, um, and of course, you can use things like Excel uh, spreadsheets and whatnot to to help you out. And I would certainly suggest that. But you can just get a piece of paper and start there as well, and just list things out. Go through the exercise and try to identify things that you may not even be aware of. You're like, whoa, I spent a lot of money going out to eat. Okay, if that's the case, then you know you have an opportunity with these variable expenses to save money. Okay, but again. Uh, using, uh, you know, like percents and just subtotals. I'm talking about basic, basic math here. We're not talking about algebra or nothing like that. Just putting some numbers down and kind of doing some basic financial math. Uh, you know, you can't save money unless you know where to save, all right? So a budget is a great exercise to help you out. But um, anyways, put um, put into the comment section what you think about this. Um, and leave any tips that you might um, think about in terms of budgeting and uh, maybe some... Um, uh, good tools as well, but it, certainly learning how to use in a spreadsheet like Excel uh, could be uh, very useful. All right, let's go down to this last thing here, and this is kind of compare uh, uh, cost per unit. So let's say you have um, two things. I don't know. Let's say like um, uh, protein powder, right? Protein powder for smoothies. Okay. So you want to make a nice little shake. Here's two protein powders right here. And here's a smaller one. Here's a bigger one. Let's say this goes for $10 and maybe this goes for $15. So when you're shopping around, don't, don't just go by the actual um, like size. You're like, okay, this looks like a similar size to this size. Okay, this can be deceiving. Okay, even though this is less, okay, it costs less, the cost per unit could be more okay this could be like let's say I'm just making something up uh, maybe like 30 cents per ounce okay 0.3 cents per ounce and this could be this right here although it's more expensive could be like let's say 20 uh, uh, cents per ounce okay so when you're doing your shopping okay like food shopping or anything like that look at the cost per unit just don't go by you know, the actual, you know, oh, this looks, this is cheaper because it's, a, you know, it's a little bit smaller, but it's cheaper. This is a marketing tactic that's very deceiving, okay? So look at the cost per unit, start reading labels and whatnot, and then, you know, do, you know, do your due diligence, okay? Because you can be deceived, all right? The cost per unit will equalize which one is a better deal, okay? Even though you pay more here, you're actually getting more than this uh, situation over here. Okay, so how do you do cost per unit? Well, you can get the total amount, like this right here, whatever ounces, you know, uh, you know, has, you know, this, this shake right here or this powder. Just get the total number of ounces and get the cost, right? So if this is like $35, you could do some, do some basic division here to get the cost per unit. Just take the total cost divided by how many uh, units 
and then you could just make those comparisons, right? So cost per unit. Sometimes you have this as well, and I'm sure there's like online tools and things that could help, and probably apps and stuff that can help you out with this. But you know, you don't want to just outsource um, your math knowledge. Okay, even though you might use tools like Excel or apps or online calculators, and I would suggest that you do that to make your life easier. You still need to have some basic math understanding. Okay, so you can do your own due diligence and think about these financial situations with your own brain and your own basic math skills okay remember these other things like excel um, or you know apps they're just uh, tools to assist you uh, with the basic math but you can do the basic math yourself okay now i know again that we're all experiencing you know uh, this you know increasing cost and unfortunately it's probably going to get more challenging not less challenging so you really want to get ahead of this and uh, leave again in the comment section if some of you have some good tips on other areas to save money uh, please you know put those in as well but I could tell you right now at least from a math uh, person that math okay this you know like all those uh, students that I heard through the years, when am I ever going to use this stuff? You know, yeah. Are you going to do calculus on a daily basis? No, you're not. But could basic math help you out uh, in your life in terms of saving money and growing your money? Absolutely. Okay. So math is essential. All right. So um, if this video was useful in some small, tiny way, please consider smashing on the like button. That helps me out. And if you're uh, new to my YouTube channel, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you want to. Uh, my goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. But I would love to have you as a subscriber uh, because I have basic to advanced math on my channel. I have a ton of stuff. So if you really want to start learning more math, you can uh, really learn a tremendous amount in my YouTube channel. Okay, But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your finances. Okay, hopefully we can all save money and your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.